give it a second. All right, it looks as though it's good. Amazing audience, we are live. And I have the pleasure today to introduce you to the amazing Jean K. Jean, it's a great pleasure. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Wow, Jean K. Hosting you and Amanda is just such a joy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for having us. Now we've gotten our wealth of food here. I make no apology. <laughs> uh, Jean does have an interesting half, which his name is Jerry. Uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, it, it, when you meet him, it's definitely Jeremiah, or Jeremy. Yeah, he he's a pistol. He's actually like a 16 caliber, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been, um, it's been fascinating being here and uh, being in this space. Thank you. Uh, the peace as you enter the door definitely resides. It's, it's, it's very fascinating. The light, the... It's a lot. It's a lot to, 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 to... There's a lot of history going on here. But more so, coming back to you being the focus, we've had a conversation, episode 1007 on the podcast. It was your birthday when we had that conversation. Right. And uh, there were many things that you're doing. There's poetry to inspire. There's a songwriter. There was the Canadian day that I... And, and we've gently followed, Amanda and I. Amanda being definitely the youthful version of you from my interpretation in terms of what she desires to accomplish in life. Oh, wow. uh, give us an update. What have you been doing? What's the latest? Update us, please. Well, I'm still writing a poem every morning hmm. and it's the start of every day and it's a wonderful way to start the day. Uh, it's, um, it was 20 years last October, so it's 20 and a half years now of, of a poem a day. Hmm. So I have a huge collection. Uh, it's it's almost monstrous <laughs> 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 because now I have to do something with it. Yes. And um, uh, it's interesting because I I um, I had a diagnosis of of cancer. I've just in fact I've just unplugged from forty six hours of chemo, and and uh, and it so it changes what you need to do with with you know, what, what is your legacy going to be? Mm. You know, what, what, uh, um, what's going to happen with all this and what am I going to get done in whatever time I've got left, which hopefully is many, many years. Mm. And, and uh, um, I have a wonderful naturopath I'm working with that I think is going to make that happen for me. Yes. So, so and I'm, I'll be leaving with you as yes, well. Yes, very grateful. Yeah. Very grateful. And, and to be um, still positive and grateful Ten months into into chemo is is uh, is is new to me, of course. But but it's also new to to what I believed it would be mm. for for others. And I'm I'm sharing um, on my on my website poetrytoinspire.com um, the healing journey poems uh, just to keep people updated with you know it's okay you mm. don't you don't need to be so afraid of of the system of the process and you know it's just um, it's something that's happening to my body it's not happening to my spirit or soul yeah and when I can keep those two separate that's really important mm. and and just having a good attitude and keeping going with what I love to do yeah. you know I love to entertain people <laughs> love to host people mm. um, uh, I sing I you know I mean that that's over for for the summer but and of course, writing poetry every day, and mm. and um, gardening, and and just yeah, be, being um, being a conduit for people to communicate. Yeah, I love that. Which is fascinating to me. Now, firstly, you're doing chemo at home, and it's absolutely fascinating to see that this young woman is not showing any signs of doing chemo, which in itself, I mean, ten months in. Yeah, I'm sure you could hear tons of stories of how challenging this could be. So it does speak to the spiritual side of you and the strength of the spiritual side of you. Yes. Where did that come from, that strength? What developed that strength? Um, well, I've, I've, I've had it all my life thanks to my parents. Mm -hmm. You know, I was raised in Christian science, which, which don't do any medicine or drugs at all. 
and kind of lost that. I mean, for the first 20 years of my life, that was every Sunday, you know, go to church and, and Sunday school. And, and, uh, and then getting married, moving to a small town that, that had, uh, well, moved to from Edmonton um, to Prince George after I got married. And, and my husband wasn't interested in church at all. Uh -huh. And so that kind of got, you know, washed away. And then, uh, and then you know, the, the um, medicinal things started to come into my life soon after that. Uh -huh. And uh, um, because Christian science is, is a wonderful way of life but it's a very dedicated, devoted way of life. Mm -hmm. and, and my father was a um, Christian science practitioner and he helped many, many people over the years. Mm. Healing through, through prayer, through who they are, through the power within, mm. through connection with God. And, and that's, that was my upbringing. So, mm. so that's where it started. Well, it's been one of your biggest struggles. I cover your own unique real shoes. This morning I was thinking about it, right? The your own unique real shoes segment, right? And things evolve, right? Yeah. But the your own unique real shoes is what truly are the shoes you've had to wear up to this point? Mm. Well, um, sister who wasn't always appreciated or trusted, um, uh, and and then you know wife mother caregiver supporter mm. um i caregiving is a big part of as has been a big part of my life and and people seem to they know that about me so so they're drawn into sharing what they need and and yeah. and, and often even with with my daily poems um, something I've written in the morning and I'm thinking, you know, where did this come from? Yeah. But somebody later that day needs to hear exactly what I wrote that morning. Yeah. You know, so there's a whole collective consciousness that we're, we're all involved with yeah. if we just tune into it. Yeah. You know, we are all one and, and, uh, and I really believe that. Has it been worth it walking in those shoes up to now? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Do yeah. you have any regrets? No, I regret. Um, well, my my youngest son, who um, uh, who has leukemia, actually chronic lymphocytic leukemia, he's had for four years. He he doesn't believe in in God. Doesn't think he believes in God. Mm -hmm. He lives a wonderful life. He's he's very creative. He's he's an artist and and a, he does a lot of scroll work. Um, amazedcreations.com is his website and um, and he's he's just he's similar to me in in, in the way that people are drawn to him mm -hmm. and and he's very positive and he's a loving father he's a loving wife, uh, husband and and has wonderful friends who just there's nobody that doesn't like him mm -hmm. and 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 that's that's wonderful for me you know to, to know that that uh, that that's part of my journey too. My older son, um, Dean, lives 600 miles away, and and uh, he's he went through a whole 17-year period of drugs and alcohol, and, and and has now been clean and sober for 17 years, Sweet. and married, and and wonderful grandfather, and <laughs> and his own business, and and just you mm. know really, really, the person that I always believed that he could be. I never lost faith through that period, but but it was a tough, mm. tough go. Yeah. Yeah. No regrets. No regrets. I love that. No. What are you most excited about? Just life in general, you know? I mean, there's, there's so much, even though I'm challenged at the moment, there's so much to be grateful for. There's, um, I'm in a wonderful home, as, as you can appreciate. Beautiful home. <laughs> And and um, you know, very supportive husband and and lots of people around that that, that really appreciate who I am. And, um, the the poetry I've shared in, in in local newsletter every month for fourteen years, mm. and people say that's the only thing I read in that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I've saved it. I send it to my mother. I send it to my sister. You know, so so. Um, Poetry isn't a, um, 
it's not always a, a, a lucrative monetary rewarding system, but, but when you can touch someone's life mm -hmm. with a poem and, and, uh, and, and share that gift and, and that beauty, it's so rewarding. Yeah. yeah. I, I just wrote one a um, few weeks ago for an 18-year-old man um, who was given it by his nine-year sweetheart. Mm. And uh, um, he's 80, 80, she's oh, 78. Right. Yeah. And, and, they, uh, and he just totally, totally loves her. Yeah. And, and, she, and, and he spoils her and she <laughs> had no way of expressing it. And, and so I wrote this poem about, about their story and how grateful she is for him. Mm. And she gave it to him at, at, at the dinner at a restaurant mm. and he started to cry halfway through it so mm. he couldn't read it. So, mm. so then he put it down and then after a while he picked it up again and started to be crying again and got <laughs> through it. And then he's sharing it with a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and he said, he said to, to uh, Amelia, that is the best gift I've ever, ever mm. received. Yeah, that's wild. Well, that's a huge compliment it's to me. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and for somebody to, to receive a poem, because I write, I, I, I write commission poems, um, to, from somebody they don't know, who's, who's written a poem about them. I mean, it's, mm. it's magical, yeah. you know? And, and I think especially for, for people, for older people, because they're starting to downsize, they, ha they don't want stuff, mm -hmm. but they've got a piece on, they've got a place on the yeah. wall that they can hang a poem, yeah. you know, so. Kind of us. Yeah, yeah. One of your early childhood memory, oh, childhood memories was uh, your was your grandmother um, brushing your hair, telling you you're beautiful, and I find that to be such a fascinating memory to see you now. Uh, of course, chemo takes away your hair, right? Yeah, yeah. This is not my hair. Yeah, <laughs> even though she wears it pretty well, right? Like you wouldn't even guess. But I think uh, so many people. Uh, are disconnected from the understanding that you are beautiful and I believe your poetry does that it communicates that whether you do have the hair or you do not have the hair you are beautiful whether you're in health or sickness you are beautiful whether you're old or young you are beautiful and I think that for me if I had to give a, a summary of what I experienced here by being here with you is that definitely more than you are beautiful I am beautiful as well and I believe you, you, you just vibrate that out consistently. So mm -hmm, I, from the bottom of my heart, like I thank you for the walk you've chosen to walk, because it, it is one of the most inspirational uh, experiences I've had on this trip thus far. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. You're very yeah. welcome. When you heard that this guy was coming from the Caribbean to see yeah. you, what did you think? <laughs> I thought, wow, that's going to be a great opportunity. Yeah. I mean, I just, um, when, when we first did the podcast last December, um, I resonated with you right away. I yeah. just, and I knew I would just because I'd listened to some of the other ones. And, um, and then you, you told me about Amanda, who, dear Amanda, who's, who's doing the, the, te the techie side of things <laughs> here. Um, um, Connected us, you know, and the fact that she's a poet and and as well, mm -hmm. and then uh, and just sort of followed along with you, and 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 then received a beautiful poem about me mm -hmm. from you guys. <laughs> that, yeah. that that was quite amazing uh, yeah. from the wonderful Amanda, mm -hmm. and and uh, but but it's just it's having it's following through on connections, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, you we all meet so many people all the time. And and it's and there's very few that that really. You think I would love to be connected, you know. I'd love to stay connected, but you don't follow up on. Yeah. And it's such lost opportunity when you don't do that. Mm -hmm. And just to have stayed and and uh, I mean, it was just so natural for me to say, come stay here. Okay. I mean, you know. She was adamant as well, folks. <laughs> <laughs> like be here. <laughs> Like, no, we're going to sleep in the van on Tuesday night. No, you're not. Yeah. You're going to sleep here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm very glad and appreciative of that. Yeah. Gene, this has been a great pleasure. Before we go, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Just be who you are and, and allow your light to shine 
um, be grateful for nature, for just just really be in nature, be with the trees, listen to the wind blowing through them, watch the flowers grow, and look at the petals, look at, look at each flower and see how unique and wonderful it is, and appreciate what a wonderful world we live in. Mm. The small things do the matter. The, they do, mm. and love conquers all. You know, just be kind, loving, caring, and it always comes back. Love always it. comes back. Love it. Jean Q, thank you for being on What Is Inspired. That like twelve minute convos with Andrew Thank Jones. you. Thank you. Boom. Boom. Did you have fun? <laughs>